Today, something all of you have been waiting for, a full gameplay by me online against another opponent using all of my tips. That's right, an entire game. So this will be part one of my full gameplay series where I'm going to teach you how to apply all my tips in an actual game against extremely skilled competition. So as you can see here, I am using the Bucks online against another user's calves, Money J2K. He is a family member, and not only that, he is also a GOAT level player. Actually, he is beyond GOAT level. He is one of those guys that don't even lose on GOAT. So, he is very, very, very good at 2K. Maybe top 3, top 5%. And as you can see, he is adjusting to his settings right away, right after he sees my warrior's motion pick and roll get him. So this is going to be a good game, I guarantee it. And yes, I am using the bucks, so I have a roster disadvantage, but that's okay. I have teach you guys so many defensive tutorials because you gotta have a good half-court defense. You see me here using on-ball, off-ball tactics to shut down his calves, pick and rolls, pick and fades. And if you got good half-court defense, you give yourself a chance even if you have a much weaker team. So I've always trusted in my half court D, but unfortunately for me, uh, Money J is really really good at fast breaks. So see, I miss, he is going to score quite well. The boy is extremely good at transition, probably one of the best transition players I've seen. And it's not cheese, like this is a clean shot, I miss. He breaks out very very nicely and his lead passes are accurate, it's very hard to adjust to. So in this game, I know I better not miss too much or too high up top because he's going to get me. But like I said earlier, as you can see, my half court defense is on lockup. Every time he tries to attack in the half court, I have found decent success. Obviously, I'm not going to stop him every time. But if we're talking like I can stop him 30% of the time, see he tries to flush, I adjust it with uh, Giannis. Success! And with my fast break, I like to be a little bit safer with the ball because I don't, my team is not very strong with shooting so I can work it around, use that warrior's motion spacing, there you see using transition attacks out of freelance offense, I've preached that all year, it's very very good especially if your team is not that great and here we're about to get into our half court defense again and he finds an open shot for love he misses it, so this is 2k, he misses an open shot that he should have made but it's okay like hit and miss happens, but see, I patiently go into my transition offense and freelance. I find an open shot and I hit it. So it's a game of hit and miss. You gotta make sure you find yourself good looks. Mon me and Money J both did good there, so I make, he missed, that's fine. And great D by him there, so it leads to his transition again, which I cannot stop because LeBron is a train. So after 6 minutes, as you can see, the score is 12 to 10. So all this means is that his best lineup against my best lineup. He is going plus 2 after 6 minutes, so I'm comfortable with this. I have the weaker squad, I'm only down 2 using optimal lineups from him and me, I'm doing okay. But because I put Greg Monroe off the bench, so usually after 6 minutes or after half of a quarter, you want to bring in your 6 man. You see, I'm still running the same starters on my optimal lineup. Not necessarily starters, but optimal lineup, but I've decided to take out Parker and put in my 6 man, Greg Monroe. And with Greg Monroe in, it's going to be a complete switch of style immediately. I'm going to go to Monroe in the post because he has gone small with Jefferson as the fall. So I'm going to punish him with my post game. This is me staying versatile. As you can see in this gameplay, I haven't called a play yet. Of all the money plays I have, I haven't really called a play yet because I want to flow through it to see how he defends my freelance, my freestyle attack. And great pick and fade by him. He's still plus one, but we have switched up the style. So from now on, because of Greg Monroe on, because my six man is on, right? I am going through my six man. My six man is a good player. This is that's why how I do it. I put the best guy as the six man coming off the bench, switch it up. We're attacking great out of the pose in Monroe, and we're getting low. So now we're plus one. And for the first time, because he's running his bench, we were able to stop his transition for once, just once. But it works because eventually players have to put on their weaker guys, usually after 6 minutes or after half a quarter, so disadvantage there. And Monroe in the pose is killing it. Money J is struggling a little bit guarding Monroe because I have switched up the style. Here I get it to Greg again, we flash Giannis, and this is my fault. The offense is great, Bayless is wide open on the left wing. I missed it, 
tried to draw a foul, took a bad shot. But this doesn't change much because it still means the Monroe offense is working, so that decision is right on my part. And transition, like I said, by Money J, deadly. But you stick with what's going working well, switching the Monroe as a decision has really worked there. I'm running quick pose up. And it's really flowing through, so I'm barely Monroe, Warriors motion. I'm gonna sneak in quick pose up, get in the ball, kick it back to OJ Mayo because he's scared of Monroe. Bang! We went from down one to plus two. And now that it is in the two minute mark, this is the time you usually like to bring in your full bench. So I'm gonna about to do that right now. Monroe still stays in there because he's a six man. See, this is why it's so important to have a six man because he can create hybrid lineups with your starters and also lead your full bench unit. So this is my full bench unit with Parker back as the starter small forward. So that's really, really good rotation because even though it's kind of like my weak lineup right now, I have my six man on and I have one of my starters along with three bench guys. So that's excellent rotations. So all of you have to understand that if you want to win, it's not just about running laps. You got to think about lineup matchups like I have in this game. I guess in this tutorial, at least in this first quarter, that's what I'm trying to show you. I'm winning because of my lineup decisions and also me applying all my tips here. I'm running a katana out of the Warriors transition branch. Nasty stuff. MCW in one. So we're surviving. We're plus five now. So we're doing Great, against a skilled player with a weaker team, we're surviving. And here you see Money J, his go-to with his band unit is the Tristan Kyrie uh, pick and roll, which is a great decision, very hard to defend, but Hansen is just too damn long, <laughs> so there it worked out for us. And you can see here again, he's running another pick and fade, pick and roll, but he is a skilled player, eventually he's gonna adjust, and he does with the pull up mid-range, we're only at one right now. And at this point, because I'm running all bench guys, now you can see me running my money plays. So I'm gonna go to the fist 1 4 horns non stop here, but I'm running it three different styles. Same play, freestyle. So you see, that was the uh, original Katana cut out of fist 1 4 horns. And here, I'm running the same play, but this time slightly different. I'm gonna go to the post, I'm gonna Katana cut, didn't work. I'm gonna stay patient, shift the defense a little bit with the Warriors motion freelance, get it back to Hanson, same play, different result. And here, last shot for a Money J, and he's running with his Tristan carry, and here he kills me. Great move. Skill, 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 pick and roll. So we're up three, and I'm running first one four horns again, but this time another different way. We're gonna Katana through the opposite block. Still works. 31 26. So after all of that work, after I've showed you how to apply all my tips and how I think throughout the course of the game or when do I call money plays, when do I put certain players on, I was able to go plus 5 against the calf with the Bucks against a GOAT guy. All right? No, no, someone even better than GOAT. And here are the defensive and offensive settings as promised from earlier for those of you who want to see. So I will continue on with this tutorial. I will show the second quarter also just to show you guys how I've, you know, apply everything I do. Because a lot of you keep asking me for gameplay. I Every tutorial I do is gameplay. Like if you look at it, it's online gameplay or some of it is offline, but a lot of it is online against other users. But I guess I never really show a full one. So there you go. I barely cut anything out. I just try to keep this video under 10 minutes. So I took out some of the, you know, all of the transitions or some of the fouls and all the free throws. But that was almost pretty much every possession in that first quarter. So I suggest rewatch that a lot so you see how I play. I mean, the commentary probably helped, but I was more so telling you of my thinking and my processing. But watch that gameplay a lot and you can see like how I flow through it. I'm pretty sure a lot of you are surprised. I actually don't call that many plays. I Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, it depends. But I do like to attack freestyle first to see how the other guy adjusts. And then I'll call the plays. You don't really want to start off with plays all the time because if they become predictable, you kind of get stuck. You want to have a good flow yourself. So I just I suggest attack a lot out of your freelance. In this case, I was using Warriors motion cuts with post ups and all that. Make sure you you know you adapt to the six man attack lineup change that I do. And if you enjoyed this, add me a like, and I will do part two probably sooner this week. And more uh, team up videos coming for my program tryouts. As always, thanks for coming by. I'll see all of you next time.